Courtney Alexander, CA. How you doing, sir? E, man. How you doing, man? I'm blessed, brother. Blessed. How you been? Man. I've been good, man. I've been blessed, man. Yeah, it's yeah. it's been a it's been a long time, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. there's been, you know, it, we started our NBA journey together, and sure it's, it's it's we're gonna get into all of it. So thanks for coming on the rematch, um, basketballnews.com and Fly TV. Um, to, and where where are you where are you living now? So uh, family is right now in Florida, uh, but we permanently reside in Atlanta. Mm. So Atlanta has been home, man, since I left college, actually. Okay. So it's been o- over 20 years now um, we've been in Atlanta. Man, man, it's crazy. Yeah. I just I, know. I just interviewed um, Q Rich and Darius Miles, um, the knuckleheads, and we was talking yeah. about that, that 2000 NBA draft. And I'm looking at the pictures. I'm like, man, we look so young. Oh, you know, know what I mean? Man. That was, I know. I was, like, was I it know. that long ago? I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Gracious. Hey, man, I literally, I had my, at the time, man, he was like maybe two and a half, little mm. C. Yeah. Um, and he he just turned 24 years old, man. So that just kind of wow. lets you know. It's crazy, wow. man. He's standing like 6'8 now. He actually plays ball as well, man. So it's it's just wow. crazy how time just flies, bro. It's crazy. I, mean, I remember y'all had the matching Chris White you know, suits on. I thought it was so dope. And it was, yeah, I was. Yeah, we did. You know what's crazy about those suits, man, is, and I think I've heard it before. They actually were cream. They weren't white. I guess people, oh. people, I don't I don't know what it was, but I remember <laughs> hearing something about white suits, man, but they were actually cream suits. Is that right? <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to tell you what's crazy, man, is right. like, that was, and we'll get into this stuff, man, but uh-huh. that was, that was like me. Like, like, and what I mean by that, I was way more concerned with my style than I was my game. And it's, mm. and it's so sad, bro, because um, had I given um, my game as much attention as the fame that I wanted, um, I could have been, I could have been a, a, a better player, man. You know what I mean? So you know, we'll, get, we'll get into all of that. We'll get into all of that. But, you know, you were someone who, you know, blossomed early. You know, I mean, you were leading the nation in scoring. I mean, you were you had a special gift. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? So I you, you put the work in, you know, in, in high school, in college. I mean, to lead the nation in scoring, that's not an easy task. No, it's, it's not easy. But I, I got to tell you, man, and it's crazy because I actually, while I did have a lot of success early on, I wasn't mm-hmm. a McDonald's All-American. Mm-hmm. Um so I remember watching my class of 95, who some think is the best class ever, high school class ever, um, um, KG and Ron Mercer and, mm-hmm. and Robert Tractor Trailer. Um, so many different guys came out of that class. Paul Pierce, Vince Carter. I was actually at home watching McDonald's game like a lot of people. So mm-hmm. um, it's just interesting, man, that you know me not being in that game, you would have thought would have put a necessary fire in my belly which it may have back then, man, but just not, you know, what I what I actually needed to to keep that humility because what ended up happening while, you know, my college career did take off, especially mm-hmm. toward the latter part of my years, man. Um, this word called ego that I really want to get into a little bit later on really crept in to my game and my spirit, man. And that's what ultimately led to my demise as a hooper. Wow. So that's that's a lot. And just even you describing that is such a you know contrast to the CA that I knew um, going back from that <laughs> NBA draft in 2000. Uh, no, uh, so, no. so, so when you when so we'll tell everybody a little bit of history of it. When, when we were both drafted, yep. um, you know, we both got drafted to Dallas. We were you, I was the, the, the Mark Cuban's first pick ever. You was Mark yep. Cuban's second pick ever. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing experience. You know, I'm sitting there, you know, and it's funny because I told this story to the to the knuckleheads, um, you know, Quinn Richardson and Darius Miles. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm at we're at the draft and I, you know, get drafted. They call my name. I go in that back room and they, you know, start interviewing and stuff like that. You know, you, well, first you walk across the the, the stage, shake mm-hmm. their stern hand. You go to the interviews in the back. So there's that back part with all the other people who are drafted. Right. And when I met you first met you. I was like, um, hey, okay, so you going to uh, Dallas? What's going on? And your face, it was low, like, no joy, no happiness. Uh, uh, he was, uh, he was like, what's up? Uh, he shook, he shook my hand and he kept going. And uh, I'm just standing there like, oh, 
Mm. Like, and, and, it's, and Q Rich looked over mm. and saw, he was like, hey man, I'll give you, I'll give you a pound, man. It's all right, man. Mm. What's going on? Because mm. it was like, you kind of mm. left me hanging. And mm. he was like, not happy. Mm. And I wanted you to explain Mm. What was your emotions? What was going on with you at that draft? Um, you know, I know you didn't go as high as you thought you were going to go, but tell me about all the emotions that were going on that night at the draft. Um, I think the biggest emotion that I can remember was, I'll share two of them with you, frustration that may have ended up in anger. Mm. Um, because as you mentioned, bro, like it was, um, it was, um, you know, it, it was my desire to be a higher pick, right? Um, and it was so crazy, bro, that like, I literally, that's an, that's an instance, that's a moment in all of our lives that we, we wait and we work endlessly for. Mm -hmm. And I was so wrapped up in myself, bro. Like, I don't even remember Mr. Stern calling my name. Oh, wow. Like, I didn't hear my name. I was so messed up. Um, in my head. So emotionally, man, I was, I was frustrated. I was, I was, I was angry. Um, so much to where I, not only did I take it from myself, but I, my emotions and, and the way that you're supposed to, you know, um, even embrace your family. Like I remember kind of giving my own mother, like a half hearted kind of hug that you give a distant relative or friend. Um, mm -hmm didn't pound everybody at my table as I was supposed to. Um, I missed the moment. And, and what's crazy e, is that is exactly why I was out the league in five years, because I went in with the wrong attitude and because it is money that I coveted so much and wanted so much, um, though, the mixture of those two things derailed that career, bro. Wow. And, you know, you mentioned the money. And so yeah. we... You know, when, when we first got there, you know, we were we were polar opposites. Just so you know, let everybody know, we we were right. So so I was I was of the mindset. Okay, you know, um, you, I don't know how long this is gonna last. I'm not gonna spend anything. <laughs> I just wanted to hold on to anything. And I I went. I got my degree um, in business management, at Syracuse University. And so my mindset was always okay. How do I invest money? How do I keep it? How do I make sure that I don't run out? How do I budget myself? What do I do? You know, so that was what I was thinking all through college. I never liked math classes. I hated math when I was younger. In wow. high school, middle school, literally, I hated math. Wow. And, you know, it's, it's funny because my kids now hate math. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they, they, they was just singing this song, you know, I don't know, you know, J. Cole, but they was like, uh, Math is the devil. So they wow. was like off, off of J. Cole's, um, wow. you know what I mean? And, wow. But that we, I, we don't like math. Wow. But, I, but I took nothing but math courses in mm -hmm. at Syracuse because I wanted to prepare myself. So when mm -hmm. I got to Dallas, it was like I was the polar opposite of you where I was just, okay, I don't want to spend anything. I yeah. was like, you know, yeah. I, I, I remember we got the little trading card deal yeah. money. Yeah. So, I, so I took yeah. that money. I had yeah. a little and one money. I, yeah. I, I took that together. I bought my like my mom a house yeah. and and you know, but she kept working and I bought a car. <laughs> um I bought Baron Davis's old car. Yeah, yeah, and, I remember. And, and, I remember. and then I rented the, the my you know apartment while I was there, and then that's it. Everything else I just I just spent just the, the card money. And when we met, it was like we both were like, huh, you're different. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. what was your what was your mentality? when we first got to Dallas? Um, my mentality was I wanted to look like a pro in the street, but I didn't want to practice like a pro in the gym. Mm. And it's, it's ill -E that I'm talking like this, man, but one of the main reasons why I'm here with you right now is because I know that there's some people out there, or even if it's just one, that's, that's more than enough for me that need to hear this story. Mm. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of reasons that we can attribute to why we do certain things. Um, I can only share mine. And I went to Dallas with an attitude of entitlement. Um, I was better than I felt like people thought I was. 
Um, and because people didn't reward um, my, 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 what I felt was my talent, I think the way I coped, he was like renting out big old limos for me and my homeboy to go party. Oh, right. A instead of doing what pros do, and and especially rookies, when you especially when you play for for a coach like Nelly, who wasn't he wasn't a big fan of playing rookies at the time. He didn't like rookies. He, he, he didn't. That's so, what it was. So he didn't only, like us. <laughs> so you can only you imagine know, how he did, felt about me. Well, listen. Do you remember when we came in the meeting with him? It was me, you, D. Harvin, Eduardo. The first thing he said was. I don't like rookies. <laughs> and we looked at each other like, that's the first yeah, thing that you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, wow. Yeah. So it, it's just crazy, man. So it's like, I'm in a situation, man, where instead of fighting back on the court, I felt like, you know what, I'm gonna take this to the street. And that thing became real toxic for me. And I think I really fell in love with it uh, more than the game. And it's funny, we're talking about this thing called money and how we were polar opposites. I like to consider it to be more of you were mature and I was immature. Let's just call it what it was, right? So I was so immature that I literally, the summer after my rookie year, I ran out of money. I had to go back to the bank to get a loan as a bridge to get me to our following contract, oh, money. Wow which was wow. November. Yeah. So, and that's something that a lot of people don't know, but that's how much of a partier, partier and, and spender I was. And again, it's sad, man, because I think, you know, there are different guys that come in with, with poor spending habits, but ultimately they learn mm -hmm. and the love of the game trumps all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I just kind of kept, kept going down that path that was started in Dallas. Wow, you know, yeah. I, I I remember one time. <clears throat> I think we were going. I think it was it was, it was me, you, and Dharv. Okay, and we were going out somewhere, and right. so the guy at the at the front, they were trying to hustle us, and okay. they were like, "Okay, you can park here, and you have to pay some ridiculous amount, and then yeah. I'll let you get into the front of the line for another ridiculous amount." And I was like, wait a minute, don't pay yeah, 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 that. Yeah. <laughs> <You're crazy. laughs> we just park right here and then we just walk the car even that long. Yeah, what, yeah, what? Yeah, don't pay yeah, him that. And yeah. it was so weird to, to, to you that I would say that. And it was just like, you know, don't worry about it. And I'm like, well, no, we can worry about it. He's trying to hustle us. And Maturity. Was, yeah, I mean. <sighs> so for me, that's the look of the pro though, right? Like, we we not supposed to wait like we it's okay to pay extra we got vip parking whether it's a hustle or not like that's the look of kind of what i'm talking about right so it's it's weird e because that's what i wanted like that's what that's what i was really after back then when i was 23 24 years old it's crazy man when you really think about it wow so you know, and and you know, for people that don't know, we had you know a few bumps while we yep. were while we were there, yep. and it was it was I think it was a combination of you had never really met anybody like me, and maybe vice versa, and it was just a uh, I don't know. It was I mean, from that point on, it was like we had a mutual respect for each other. Yeah, I, I felt you know what I mean. But I think, but before then, it was just a. I don't, how do you how would you describe it? Like how do you describe led up to our to our to our um, incident? E man, I think um, again, I was so wrapped up in me. Like everybody else really wasn't important. Okay. Um, if I if I liked you, we was cool, but. You know, even with some of the relationships I had, it was it would be it would be a transactional type of relationship, meaning I had to get something out of that. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the cat I was, man. And um, so as far as you go, one, one thing I remember about you, though, um, it's a few things that I remember. I remember you telling me about buying Baron Davis's car. Okay. And at the time. That was like you know, the most ridiculous thing you had ever heard of. Listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Why in the world would you buy a used car from another pro? Like, yeah. for me, I'm like, what in the world? That makes no sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, if I'm watching you from afar, it's like, yo, this dude 
he began with the end in mind, mm. which is wisdom to me. And it's, it's amazing to me that you had that in you coming into what we came into. Um, when you're surrounded by everything, I feel like really but that. And right. that's, why, that's why you've always stood out. I think because you had a, you had a, a not only a maturity, but it was almost like an audacity to say, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, man, like I'm just gonna rock different. I'm just gonna be different. Like I'm right. just not. I'm not. I'm not a follower." And that's why you continue to step and walk the way you do. I'm just. I'm locked. I'm focused on what I do. What I want to do. You ain't. You ain't here to hurt nobody. You just kind of. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and and it, it's just wisdom that you had locked in you. Whereas for me, it's amazing, man. And I tell people this, like, I worked my entire life on the court um, to be a pro, but I lack the life lessons, man. I lack the, the certain things that, you know, all professionals have to have, the ability to work with others, you know, oh, respecting, okay. respecting authority, all of those intangible, those ingredients that anybody got to have in any workforce, man. I right. really lacked in those areas. Wow. But you yeah. know, but, but, but one thing I do remember, like you talk about the things that you remember about me. I, I remember after our incident, we had our incident in the locker room. And then afterwards, um, I remember you were you were like at a shooter, you were shooting. Uh, it was a practice. So I think you were shooting okay. and you turned around to me and you said, hey, to show you what kind of dude I am, I'll pay your fine. Because we both got fined. Okay. And you, were, okay. and you was like, I'll pay your fine. And I yeah. was like, no, nah, that's cool. You don't have to do that. You know what I mean? Um, I appreciate it. And then we had like a conversation after practice, yeah. after that. And then we just talked. And then we were cool ever since then. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was a, a thing where we, from it, it took that incident for us to like kind of see each other, so to speak, if, yeah. that, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, you, so might, I, you might be right, yo. You might so be I, right. saw, I saw you differently. Yeah. And then yeah. you saw me differently. Sure, sure. And, and it was just like a mutual respect type sure. of thing. So then, sure. so then after that, fast forward, we we got both all get traded. It was like six of us, you know yep, what I mean? Yep. For for, <laughs> for, for <laughs> Juwan Howard. Yep, yep, and we're, yep, and yep. we're in DC. Yeah. And you know, it, it's interesting because when we're in DC and MJ comes out of retirement, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. you know, Quan Quan Brown got drafted and yeah. I just interviewed him, uh, which was a whole lot going on. Wow. Um, but I remember seeing a lot of stuff going on, and there I kind of remember you kind of being within your own, so to speak, but you was trying to see, okay, MJ, I see him moving the way that I want to move. This is just, now you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm watching, because I was observing. Remember back when in DC, what a lot of guys say, I didn't really say much, right? And that's you, true. I didn't, you never, I real you quiet, never really said a whole right? lot. But I would observe. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'd yeah, be sitting there yeah. just watching dynamics yeah. of everybody, yeah. Yeah. you know? And so wow. I'm watching you, um, interacting with MJ and everything like that, and almost trying to do what he does, yeah, and, and, and carry yourself the way that he carries himself, as far as the you know forty five different suits. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, 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 the way that you walk, the way that you know, just the swag type of thing, movement. Uh, uh, am I am I right or that? You know, the interesting thing about Michael, man, mm -hmm. is that. Anybody that knew me knew that he was my guy growing up, right? And um, it was interesting though, E, because when we finally had, when I finally had an opportunity to play with a guy that was my guy growing up, it actually was the opposite of what you would expect. Now, clearly there were things that maybe I was, I was mesmerized by and all of that kind of stuff. But E, truth be told, and I tell people this, I actually didn't enjoy the basketball experience mm -hmm. my second year in the league because this cat named Michael Jordan, again, you got to understand the, the frame of mind I had back then. Mm -hmm. Michael was taking away from my shine. Mm -hmm. If we remember, I got tr we got traded from Dallas. I was not playing in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I ended up my rookie year... Um, 
the last like maybe 25 games with the Wizards, you were hurt then. Was hurt, right. um, but I played well, well enough mm-hmm. to actually make one of the all rookie teams and all of this yep. kind of stuff. And and don't get me wrong, the second year, the year that Michael came back to play, I was super excited that he was playing with us, mm-hmm. but it grew into disdain for the fact that I felt like he was overshadowing me. And mm-hmm. that right there should let you know that my time in the league was growing short. Because well, when no, no, no. So, so, and what I mean by that is what I was supposed to do was take whatever role Doug Collins was going to give me. And what I was supposed to do because of the talent, that gift that you spoke about that I was born with to play, me and this dude played the same position. Back then, me and that guy had a relationship that people don't even really know. Michael and I had a decent relationship. I initially met him when I was in college. Um, Mm. So our relationship went back a little bit. But I cared not to ask him for any advice. See, I I cared not to do what the late, great Kobe Bryant did from L.A. Mm. And I'm in the locker room with this dude. Mm. Like, Like we're on planes with this dude. I choose I chose to not ask for any advice from him. But what I chose to do was cop an attitude because things weren't going my way. You know, it's interesting. Um, and I was just talking about this with someone um, because we were comparing at that time um, you and Richard Hamilton. And okay. so both of y'all were there and then MJ played both of y'all positions, right? Now, talent wise, to be honest with you, I thought you were a little bit ahead of Richard Hamilton. This is my personal opinion. Okay. As far as a score, as far as the way that you would jump. The, your your athleticism and how high you would jump on your um, jump shots, okay, and and the way that you would elevate and you would jump over people, okay. y'all both contribute. So so for one thing, if MJ would have never came back, it would have been completely different. It would have been y'all two. You know what I mean? But then that part, there had to be one or the other because MJ played the other position. Yeah. So so then I'm looking. Now remember, I'm observing everything. I yeah. we had no conversation with <laughs> that. I'm just sitting there <laughs> in my locker looking at everything, right? So Rip played it to where he was going to get wisdom from MJ or ask mm-hmm. him advice or take different things. Mm-hmm. Where you played it where it was like you against MJ. Yes. Yes. And that, that's the yes. and that was the only reason. Why Rip got the nod instead of you, in my opinion, because as far as talent wise, as far as putting the ball in the hole, which was both what was considered the, what y'all needed to do at that time, and and the and the system that they wanted to play. Remember, Rip liked to run off all these screens and then get open and stuff like that. One drill pull up and everything like that. MJ didn't really want to do all that. He wanted to run like almost a simulated triangle. Yeah. Right and play off him. So the movement and the stuff and you creating your own shot and then elevating everybody, it in in theory that worked better for the offense of what MJ wanted to do. Right? I don't know if I, I, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this or I want this breakdown even, you know, you know, <laughs> say it to, but for me seeing it, yeah. I'm like, huh, this is interesting. i and that's all I'm saying. This is I'm looking, watching it all play out. And then it played out where Rip got more of the nod, but I think you worked better actually in the system that MJ wanted. Did you, you ever think of that? I never thought about it like that. I've never had anybody break it down to me the way you breaking it down. But, to me but does it make sense now that what it, I'm saying it? I understand where you're coming from, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you something about one of the differences between me and Rip Hamilton back then. Uh-huh. Rip did Rip. Right. Like whether Michael was on the court or not, he still played to his own strength. Okay. He still he still came to work every day. See, Rip didn't do like me, I'm sure. Rip didn't go into Doug Collins' office and say, we don't have to get along, we just have to work together. <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, no, Rip didn't do that. So, so you, so you got, you got to understand, man. I was a different cat back then, and 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 there were so many different things and variables that led to Rip 
not necessarily playing over me. I don't like to look at it that way. I like I to look you. at it like me not playing. I, got I never, okay. I never gave myself a chance, man. It was never about Doug Collins that, you know, and back then that's who I would try to attribute things to. It was right. never about the fact that Michael Jordan came back and played for the Wizards. It was never about, you know, me and Rip Hamilton playing the same. For the, it was never about none of those things, man. It was about the fact that that same dude that walked across that stage that we talked about a little bit ago, mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. If somebody asked me to define what a pro was, I wouldn't be able to tell you other than mm. maybe the type of crib you're supposed to live in and the kind of car you're supposed to drive. Wow. Uh, other wow. than that, I can't, I couldn't tell you the intangibles of a pro basketball player. I couldn't. Wow. So, so, so I remember, and, and this is no disrespect to Rip. Rip was the truth. You know what I mean? Yes. But, yes. but, but, but it's, it's more of a testament to, to you as to far as the talent that you had. I appreciate you know what I mean, that. and, and I for what that. I am observing. Yeah, um, so, 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 so later on, that you know that um, you get traded to was it New Orleans? Yes, to New Orleans. Yep. And down in New Orleans, you um, tore your Achilles. I tore yeah. my Achilles actually my second year in New Orleans in training camp. Okay. So not my third year, but my fourth year would ended up actually being my contract year um okay. i tore my achilles in that during that training camp okay walk me walk me through that and what happened after you tore your achilles or maybe leading up to it um leading up to it man it was weird e, because i remember experiencing some some discomfort in my achilles now i don't remember exactly which one it was um but I remember, I, you know, I tore it. I tore it in a preseason game. It's, it's, a, it's, it's actually interesting because Teron Lou, I remember at the time, um, he played for the Orlando Magic. And we were playing Orlando in Orlando. And he was okay. actually on the bench. Um, I went up for a regular jump shot on the baseline. And T. Lou actually told me he heard a pop. It sounded like a gunshot. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> and, and I tore it. And... But what ended up happening was I, I came back to Atlanta. I did all of my rehab. By the grace of God, man, like I, I was healed and back running and jumping like old times six months after. Wow. Yeah, I was, I was back, you know, doing okay. my thing um, and, and feeling rejuvenated. Worked hard okay. that summer um, and came back the following year on like a partial guarantee. Okay. Uh, which really should have got my attention on a partial guarantee uh, to go to the Sacramento Kings to play for the Kings. But wouldn't you know, e, on my flight back to Sacramento, mm -hmm. I actually missed the flight because I was out partying the night before. Really? Yeah. So, and, and, and just real quick about the whole Achilles tear. I didn't know it then, um, but that was actually the beginning of something that God ultimately did in my life. I didn't recognize it then, but I actually believe that that was the beginning of a of a of a of a spiritual healing for me because I needed that. I needed to be removed from everything and everybody and to literally be sat down and immobile. Now, clearly, I just shared with you the situation in Sacramento. I didn't get it then. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons why I know I didn't get it is because in, during that Sacramento King training camp, I popped a couple tendons in the bottom of the other foot, no, wow. um, which was a year after. And that was pretty much the end of my NBA career. Now, now let me before that, you know, you you, you said you missed it, the the flight because you were partying. Yes, you, and, and I remember you partying a lot in Dallas. Was was the was the going <laughs> out? It, well, I mean, just going out a lot, the the, the partying. You know yeah, what I mean? The, yeah. the, the, the limos, the yeah, you know, like like yeah. a like a like an old school Mace video. You know what crazy. I mean? Like it was it's just crazy. out. It's and crazy. was that kind of a form of? therapy for you like was it you know or was it just that you just like to go out and party and live that lifestyle like what what was it that that you that you were drawn to so much with the with the party you know i 
I really think a lot of it had to do with, I remember one morning I was, I was in New Orleans and I was talking to my mother on the phone. And like I mentioned to you before, I don't remember a lot of things back then, but I do remember some things that what I would like to consider they're pretty important things that I remember from back mm -hmm. then that kind of stuck to me. I remember my mom, mom Dukes telling me, and I'm sure this, this didn't delight her in saying this, man, but you're living the life, but you're not a pro. Mm. I remember my mother telling me that. And anybody that know me and my mom, like that's like to this day, like it's just a certain type of relationship that we have right. as not only mother and son, but like as far back as I can remember, she was always right, right. there for me, always right. there for me during basketball times, basketball right. games, um, help keep my head through certain situations. And I remember her telling me that. So I say all of that to say, E, like, that was part of the, 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 the party. That's what we were supposed to do. Oh, like, I that's see. what it looks like. Now, I'm sure this is like foreign mm -hmm. to you. This is like, what are you talking about? This was, this was my thought back then. Mm -hmm. Now, again, this is really important to me. Part of the reason why, or a majority of the reason why I'm doing this interview is I know that there's people out there that need to hear this stuff, man, right, because right. there's some cats, whether they be in the NBA, whether they be in the MLB, whether they be in the NFL, they are doing the same stuff. But right. I just don't, I haven't found a lot of cats that's um, sharing some of their trials and tribulations. I recognize through all of those trials and tribulations, they were actually meant to help prevent other people from doing it, if that makes any sense. Oh, like, no, like, so, so for me, um, that's what it was. So it's, whether you're calling it the, the Mace video, that's what it looked like, a rap mm -hmm. kind of cat in the NBA. Right. Like, like right. are, you, are you hooping or are you, <laughs> right. like, what are you doing? Like, because you, and this is when, again, this is, these are all signs that you know that your time here is going to be limited. You're coming off of DMPs. Right, right. In Dallas. Think about it. You said I was partying a lot in Dallas, as I was. Mm -hmm. Off of DMP CDs, which just so, to our, so, so the folks out there, they understand. Do not play coach's decision. Right. So I went from not playing in a game to partying that night. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why Mark Cuban and those guys had to get me out of there because they understood. You can't invest in this type of guy. Man. You just can't. Mm. You know, you it, it's it's hard to use your story to open up, um, to use yourself as an example for younger people. And I have a lot of respect for you. For, for being able to do that. You know, something that my mother would always tell me growing up <clears throat> is that sometimes the things that you go through isn't that they aren't meant for you. They're meant to help somebody else. Amen. And she would always say that when I was younger. And I'd be like, what does that mean? Like, what, I don't even know what that means. But she would repeat it to me over and over again yeah. all the time. Yeah. And as I got older, it made sense. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's it, it's you're right. There are a lot of people young people, um, high school gays, you know, I'm, I'm in the AAU world, yeah. you know, coaching my son's AAU team. So I, I see it yeah. and I see what they think yeah. making, making it quote yeah. unquote is yeah. and how yeah. you carry yourself and they want to wear the, you know what I mean? Impress people and they want to yes. wear ice everything and, yes. and yes. talk about the cars and talk about yes. all that. And, and that's their motivation yeah. Yeah. to be able to attain that. That's right. And that's so right. what you're doing, as far as being open to talk about how that's not it. Like no. basically that that's 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 not what it's about. That's no. not it. That's like a no. fast track to, you know what I mean, a, a downfall. And it's more guys need to speak on this and speak to young people about this. Because they'll 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 young people listen more than I think people give them credit for if they're told. They're all, they're only they're, they, now they see one thing, right? And they see it all the time. So that's what they're attracted to. Yeah. But they're not being told, you know, from experience, the other part of it, like the truth, like what you're doing right now. So I just want to take this part just to say I, I definitely respect you. I appreciate um, it for that. So, so talk to me about what happened after 
the Achilles tear after you was no longer in the league? What what happened then? How did you deal with no longer being in the NBA? Um, I think what ended up happening was everything that I did as a player, you can kind of multiply it by 10. And mm. that's what you had post-career for like five years strong. Um, and it was, it got to a point where I was leading a very dangerous life for myself. Um, but what ended up happening e, about 10 and a half years ago, um, Christ made himself known in my life. Mm. Um, and it was amazing because it was, it was nothing that I did. It was nothing that I really sought out. Mm -hmm. um, the way I remember it was like he literally came in to my life and took desires from my heart mm -hmm. that I had, whether it be partying, whether it be using profanity, whether it be listening to a certain type of music, whether it was just a lot of different things was actually shifted and blown out of my life. Um, and that's ultimately what set me on the path that I am in now. I tell people, man, like I'm, I'm coaching now, which is okay. I'm sure comical to some people, like how in the world could, well, as your mother mentioned, and what I've learned over time, man, was is that there's actually power and purpose in your pain. Mm. And if you'll make yourself available to it, it can work wonders for you. Um, and I went through the NBA assistant coaches program, which kind of helps ready former players to be NBA coaches. And I've uh, been coaching in the NBA G League for the last three years. Okay, um, that's great. Grinding and, and learning. It's funny, man. All, the, all of the things that we feel we know as mm -hmm. former players, one of, the, one of the first things I realized was just how much I didn't know about the game that I wow. love so much, man. It's wow. crazy. It's, it really is, man. So, um, but ultimately that's what happened, man. Um, for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, so this whole basketball thing and, and this money thing, um, that wasn't my role. It wasn't supposed to happen for me. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I actually also feel that Let's say I did, quote unquote, blow up as an NBA player. I, I truly believe that I could be and would be dead and gone right now Wow! Uh, with more money. Because yeah. I, I'm a firm believer you just become a bigger whatever you are with money. Right. I believe right. that. Um, wow. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm um, there. there so, so this whole coaching thing is, is for me, it's rooted in obviously the love of the game and, and, and growing. And I'm an ultimate competitor, man. I want to win every night out. Uh, right. But it stretches far beyond those four lines for me, man. Um, helping guys, you know, save their money, their, their, their family and their career. Because I, what I found is that we have a hard time doing all three of those things simultaneously. Mm. Like family, money, and career. Like right. we struggle with doing all three successfully. Right. Um, so it just, it kind of, it stretches far beyond. I'm big on building character through the game. And ultimately that's because that's where I lacked. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, you really have a, a an amazing story to tell and I, I really hope you continue telling it. Um, I, I mean, there's a lot of different, you know, and we brushed over uh, some yeah. of it, but I know there's a lot of details. I mean, I, this would be a, amazing book to be honest with you um yes. that, a, that a lot of people need to be able to to hear and um and read and to be able to really be able to study and pay yep. close attention to what because yep. you know if, if if somebody is telling you listen i was in your shoes yeah okay i saw these things happen i went in this specific direction so there's no reason for you to go into the same direction when i'm telling you exactly what was going to happen if you go down this direction. Do you know what I mean? But you're saying it from a first hand standpoint and that's where it resonates more. You know, it's a little different when somebody's telling you something and they're removed from it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're, they're, yeah. they're, you know, young people yeah. are listening. Okay, yeah. this person is telling me, 
you know, don't do this, don't do this. They don't know nothing about this, but they tell you. Yeah. But when you're talking firsthand, yeah. listen, yeah. I did this. Yeah. yeah. So I am telling you yeah. that the, it, yeah. it resonates completely differently. For so sure. I, you know, sure. I really want to encourage you to keep keep telling your story, keep pursuing. You know, I told, you know, you remember my wife, Nicole, she was, she yeah. was a, girlfriend, a girlfriend then. Yep. And I told yep. her that I'm going to interview. She was like, oh, that's great. Make sure yep. you, you tell him I said hi. Yep. And it's good to hear that he's doing well, you know, yep. and everything like that. So yep. Appreciate I'm it. definitely rooting for you. But, Make sure but you give her my best too, man. Definitely, definitely. And so if you, if you could just wrap up, you know, what you want people to know um, and learn from hearing your story. You know, uh, what, what do you want people to know about you? Um, there's, there's victory mm. in my story. I think sometimes you have to lose to win. Mm. I think we got to be careful of what we define as a win. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, like, I'm married to a woman who I don't really deserve. Mm. Uh, she's been with me through all of this, bro. Back when we had our first child after my first year in college, mm -hmm. uh, I won. Uh, I'm a much better father today uh, than I was back then. Mm -hmm. uh, I won. I realize that there's so much stuff out here that's bigger than me. My life success is not rooted in what I do for me. It's what I do for others. Wow. Um, I won. So there's victory in it. Now, mm -hmm. my, my career didn't materialize as I would have hoped, but mm -hmm. it wasn't supposed to. Right. Right. I was saved from myself. You know what wow. I mean? Wow. Um, and I got so much peace in that, bro. And that's why I'm coaching now. And that's why um, I've taken the passion for the game and just kind of re redirected it mm -hmm. uh, to feed others as opposed to trying to eat everything myself, if that makes any sense, man. Right. So, um, yeah, man. And, and, and really just that's, that's really it, man. That's really it. It's not it's not too complicated, man. It's real simple. Well, that's 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 amazing. I gotta just say, I'm so proud of you, man. Appreciate like, you, brother. Like you know, just you know, the, you like, and I are different. So we came right. in this thing together. Yeah, and we're yeah, standing we came. here now in our mid 40s and just kind right. of after all of the smoke clearing. I guess right. I'm I'm so happy and proud. I just want to echo that same thing back to you. I've been watching you for a while from afar, and mm. but I'm not surprised because again, you you began with this stuff in mind. Right. I'm not surprised right. that you and the missus just. Just um, had another anniversary. Me and my mm. me and my wife just uh, had our our sixteenth, and um, um, yeah, man. So it's just we're we're winning, man. Right, we're right. we're winning, and for me, that's ultimately what it's about for me. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. No, we are definitely blessed, and you know when you're blessed. You have to be a blessing to others. And that's exactly what you're doing. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely much success to you and your journey um, and everything that you're about to do. And you're about to do some big things. You're about to affect a lot of people with your story. Thanks, Eve. And, and it's gonna it's gonna be it's going to amaze you the amount of people that you affect. I know you don't you can't really see it right now because you know you know you wanna affect some people. And you you know, you said if even just one person. It's going to be a lot of people who are affected yeah. for a long time from your story and influenced and inspired and everything else. So I, I can't say it enough. So I thanks for coming. That. Thanks for coming on the show today. For sure. And, and I can't say it enough, man. Much respect to you. Much love. I appreciate you. All right. Peace. Take care.